is an asteroid discovered in December 2004 called Apophis. Named for the Egyptian god of death and darkness. <laughs> it was named only after its trajectory was identified to intersect that of Earth. Had that not been the case, we would not have named it Apophis. We could name it like Tiffany or something, or Bambi. <laughs> you know, something not threatening. This one was headed towards Earth, Apophis. All right, once you discover an asteroid, you gotta wait a little while to get enough of a segment of its orbit to calculate what the full orbit will be to know if it will come in harm's way. So, we did that. We, the community, I wasn't the one, we got peeps who do this, okay? <laughs> so, peeps, if you're over 30, means people, okay? <laughs> Forgive me. If I say you got peeps, it's people. It's actually a loving phrase, right? It's not little yellow marshmallow. They're not, no. right. <laughs> so, we get the orbit. Turns out, in the year 2029, the month of April, the 13th of April, <laughs> a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Apophis will come so close to Earth that it will dip below our orbiting communication satellites. And it is the size of the Rose Bowl. It'll be the largest, closest thing we have ever observed to come by Earth. Now, of course, a much bigger asteroid took out the dinosaurs, but we weren't around at the time. So this is in, in the era of observing the cosmos with technology. This will be the closest, biggest thing we'll ever see come by. Now, the orbit we now have for it is uncertain enough because these things are hard to measure and hard to get an exact distance for. The orbit is uncertain enough so we cannot tell you exactly where that trajectory will be. We know it won't hit Earth. We know it'll be closer than the orbiting satellites. There is a range, a 600-mile zone. We call it the keyhole. If the asteroid goes through the middle of that keyhole, it will hit the Earth 13 years later. It will hit the Earth. 500 miles, sorry, 500 kilometers due west of Santa Monica. So it doesn't matter where it goes through that keyhole. Now, It'll that's if it goes through the center. Uh, if it goes through other places within that keyhole, then the contact point shifts further into the Pacific or closer towards Las North Vegas America. Or something. Yeah, right. Yes. Okay. But if it goes through the center, it hits the Pacific Ocean, plunges down into the Pacific to a depth of three miles, at which point it explodes, cavitating the Pacific in a hole that's three miles wide three miles deep. That will send a tsunami wave outward from that location. That's 50 feet high, five stories. Oceans don't like having holes in them. <laughs> so, this three mile high wall does what? You say that so timidly, sir. Uh, <laughs> collapses. It's a three-mile-high wall of water. <laughs> Thank you. Falls back into the hole, sloshing against itself with such ferocity that it rises high into the atmosphere and falls back down to the ocean, cavitating the ocean again. So now you make a cavity a second time. This cycle takes about 50 seconds. You can calculate it, okay? So here comes the first tsunami, and 50 seconds later comes another tsunami. So there you are on the beaches of Malibu. <laughs> tsunami comes in. Now, unlike the tsunami in Indonesia, which was one wave, 
that went deep into the shore. This first wave needs a supply of water to exist so that the next wave actually sucks back on it to create itself. So this tsunami will only go in about a quarter of a mile. <laughs> We have the sound effects person in the <laughs> upper row there. So it only goes in a quarter mile before it gets sucked back out for the next wave to come. Here's the problem. Whatever was there on the coastline is now brought back out to sea. And the next tsunami brings it back to the shore. All the million dollar homes in Malibu, they get taken out to the sea and then back. But this time they're in a slightly different shape, okay? <laughs> and so what happens is all, all, the, all the artificial stuff, all the houses, the factories, they get churned into this ablative force that sandblasts the entire west coast of North America clean. So have a nice day for that. Nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, but, but this big school. So. I'm sorry, I said uh, 13 years after... 2020, I, uh, I misspoke. Um, it's April 13th, 2029, and if it threads the keel, it will hit Earth April 13th, 2036. So it's a, it's a um, seven year. And I'm saying, why don't you like become an engineer and figure out how to deflect the thing? Okay, actually there are two camps out there. There's the, let's blow the sucker out of the sky. There's those folks, right? We met them, we know who they are. We got the nukes, let's open the silo, take it out. Now, it turns out we, are, we, particularly Americans, are very good at blowing stuff up. We're less good at understanding where the pieces go after it blows up, okay? That's just the nature. That's just how that works. So. If you want to blow up the asteroid and you, let's say you hit it with the nuke and then it splits into two, now you have to evacuate two places on Earth <laughs> instead of just one. You know, you got to like, if you blow it, it has to go to smithereens so that they all burn up in the atmosphere, but you don't have no guarantee of that because we don't but, guarantee what stuff looks like after it blows up. But, so, But if it burns up in the atmosphere, that's also a problem. Uh, not something the size of Apophis. We could survive that. That would be a really beautiful uh, meteor shower. Hmm. So it wouldn't, it would, that's not enough heat added to the atmosphere. It would be. It home. would be a warm night. <laughs> well, it felt. It's a little. But it won't, it won't ignite the forests. That's uh, your, oh, what okay, you're worried no, about. That's... Okay. It was a, a slight concern. It'll be yeah. toasty. Yeah. It's, it'll be toasty. So Plus, bit... you know, this California, you don't need asteroid impacts to like ignite your forest, all right? <laughs> Every time I turn around, there's some like biblical disaster going on out here. I'm, no, I'm look, we turn on the news, fires, and then I'm waiting. When are the locusts coming and the frogs? You know? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> so, did somebody really go shh? Like we're gonna wake the locusts? Are they? <laughs> are they like ready to come out of the ground? Um. Plus, I remember so, seeing a comedian joke about it. I don't take credit for this joke. The comedian noted that all these disasters in California, they all like happen in the rich neighborhoods, right? Poor neighbors are never like affected by these disasters. So some cosmic Or, or it's not message. reported on TV. <laughs> or, or it's not reported on TV. Um, but, so anyway, getting back to the point. So the better, the, for my money, the more sensible thing to do is to deflect it. And we've got top people working on deflection scenarios right now. And one of them is, if this is, these apples are good for this. Um, yeah, it's positively Newtonian. Yeah. Actually, what I need is, do you really need this car? Well, I want to use the battery for a second. I'll put, the, I'll put it back in. So what? This is just so you can go long, right? No, no, no. So here's the poppets coming in, OK? So the deflection scenario is you get a spaceship. It'll be look something like this, right? And you come up to it, and then you just kind of park it next to the, the asteroid. Now, now, when you say park, you're saying in a similar orbit to, to the asteroid. Yeah, park is a, um, used very a loosely here. Term, yeah. what, what's happening, <laughs> yeah, parallel park it as in a... <laughs> so, you, so what happens is both the asteroid 
and the spaceship, if it weighs a couple of tons, that's all you need, each have mutual gravitational attraction. So they will want to drift towards each other. So you put up little retro rockets that prevent that from happening. So once it wants to go in, you sort of prevent it. Every time you prevent it, you're actually towing the asteroid from its intended path. And that is a gravitational tether, gravitational tractor beam. If you get it early enough, you don't have to move it by much. All you have to do is have it miss the keyhole. That's all you need. You just don't want it to go through the keyhole. Then if you miss it one direction, it, it overshoots Earth. It goes the other direction, you undershoot Earth. What if you accidentally drag it into the keyhole? Uh, that would be bad. Right, yeah. You don't want that to happen. Accidentally dragging it into the keyhole. Oops. You would be unpopular. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's, we got people working on that. And it's the right time scale. People alive today will be alive then. And we just need... At know, least until April 13th. Uh, to, on, and on the West Coast. <laughs> right. Right, yeah. Thank you.